Henry Darger, the outsider artist slash author of the Realms of the Unreal, has had many critics write about his work. Much of what is written deals with trauma and how it has influenced his art. Much of the popular content includes his storytelling, unique process of creating his artwork, and the controversies that surround the depiction of violence towards the little girls. Certain subtle elements of Darger's work have not been discussed very much, like his use of color. The subject matter of the realms of the unreal is based on Henry Darger's early childhood trauma, and the more subtle elements of his work reflect that trauma as well. Though there is a wide range of stylistic choices that can be seen throughout his paintings, Darger's use of color, line work, and composition seem to follow a non-strict set of rules with a great level of consideration. Eight B. It is immediately noticeable in this panel the vibrant and rich colors of the flora in the scene contrasted by the warmer color schemes of the foreground. Reds, yellows, browns, and tans make up the subject matter in the foreground, while the darker shades of green make up the trees, grass, and brushes in the background. The composition entails an implied horizontal line delineating the horizon. The composition appears to have two vanishing points, showing that Darger appears to have a level of competency when implementing perspective. Though his compositions vary in regard in this regard throughout his illustrations. This painting's subject matter is supposed to be of an ominous weather pattern, yet the illustration is very Eden-esque, and the girls in the illustration appear to have a calm demeanor. Also their position in the foreground shows their importance over the surrounding scenes. In plate 6a, Continuing this type of color scheme, immediately noticeable in this, in this painting, the floor appears to be larger than it should be and has deeper saturations of color. A group of girls, the Vivian girls, are shown in a running pose as if escaping from something from the right side of the frame. Their figures appear to be traced from the same source image, an indication of the limitations of Darger's techniques for drawing. These ominous weather systems to the top right of the picture plane are a reoccurring neutral presence seen in many of Darger's paintings. Once again, Darger's use, uh, Darger uses rich, saturated colors in a panel which showcases children. These types of scenes tend to contrast to those that showcase the Glandolinian soldiers. Even though Darger doesn't always adhere to this apparent separation of chromatic schemes depending on subject matter, the subtle use of these narrative cues seems to be mostly consistent. In plate 11b, comparatively in this panel, it appears that the color schemes are more subdued in the Glandolinian soldier's presence. You can even see a change in their uniform's color saturation from the scene of the soldier choking Jenny to the panel where Vivian or the Vivian girls have the drop on the soldiers. A far better outcome for the girls. The colors do seem to be more vibrant in the scene with the victorious Vivian girls. It might be that their presence it might be that this signifies the importance of the girls. In plate ten B here in this panel, the composition seems to be more chaotic. Darger seems to have played with scale. Also, the color schemes seem to bring focus on the Vivian girls, the flags they are holding, and the Christian soldiers they are leading into battle. The land is left mostly uncolored, with very little saturation in those parts that are colored. The Glandolinian soldiers appear in their gray confederate like uniforms, with their neutral colors making them appear to sink into the background, almost as if their importance is of lesser value. It is possible Darger uses this style of coloring to show hierarchy in his work. Perhaps it's subconscious, but mostly consistent. But it appears to be mostly consistent. 
Darger's familiarity with colors stems from his childhood. According to Darger, he would always receive coloring pictures or storybooks for Christmas from his father, and he would purchase paint boxes with his own money. His father didn't have a lot of money, so the fact that Darger would spend any money on paints shows his need to be creative, or his need for being creative. Perhaps he has learned most of his artistic skills when he was younger, aside from using photo enlargements, of course. It is important to note that Darger would spend any money on colors shows how important being able to create with colors was to him. Later on in life, he would continue to a life of meager means. This means that the use of colors meant something to him. One aspect of Darger's process involved the collection and appropriation of images for use in tracing. It was this curation of images that allowed him to populate his paintings with characters which inevitably influenced the style of his work. It was a clever way of bolstering his drawing ability, though it limited him to the poses he could find. The area that had the most leeway or the area where he had the most leeway in his designs was, of course, the color scheme. Darger placed more importance on children, especially little girls, than on adults. This is due to his religious beliefs. At the pinnacle of the ideal of the little girl were the Vivian girls, a group of heroine characters Darger had created. It is possible that they represent the seven virtues. Darger had written in his autobiography that he had read in the Bible that God places more importance on children than adults. This doctrine, along with the negative events of his childhood, would go to reform his staunch belief on the importance of children. Darger had also written about the many uh, formative events of his childhood. Most notably were the negative events such as the loss and absence of his mother and sister at a very early age. Darger had written about his mother passing away from complications during his sister's birth, and he also had written about his sister being given up for adoption as well in his autobiography. It was his mistreatment at the hands of the institutions, the loss of those important to him, and the general feeling of not belonging that shaped his feelings towards society. These life events ultimately made Henry Darger a recluse. Some of the more positive aspects of his life included his relationship with his father, his piety and adherence to his religion, and the opportunity as a child to learn to read and paint. Darger Sr. made it possible for Darger to learn to read by having him read the newspaper. Darger's reading ability at a young age, and with all the storybooks he read, he became competent in storytelling. This, coupled with his affinity for expressing himself through painting, was crucial in his prolific writings and paintings later in life. These events would, these events would have had a significant impact on his mindset and would ultimately influence the world of fantasy for him. Even though Darger's composition and use of colors did evolve over the years as he painted his illustrations, there were consistencies with the use of these colors that seemed to become a sort of rule with subtlety. One conclusion I have come to is that the use of color was a sign of beauty and holiness, or perhaps the lack of color might have expressed Darger's feelings on the wickedness of the enemy and the peril the girls were in.